What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Off the Bench here on 104.5 ESPN. Every single Tuesday at 7.30, we talk to the head man of LSU football, talking about Coach, Coach O. Uh, Coach O, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, guys. Great to be on the show. Yes, sir. A little competition Tuesday. Uh, but before we move forward, Coach, I, I want to ask you a little bit about, uh, this has nothing to do with practice. It's going to be more about just kind of the attitude in the locker room as a whole. But w- when you look, you know, you, uh, Andre Anthony out. We still know the status of Derek Stingley. So you've had a couple leaders go down over the last couple of weeks, right? Then, then you have a painful loss like the one Saturday where you did a lot of good things but just couldn't get it done in the end. Um, that, that That's a lot of mental stress and adversity put onto this roster, I guess, how, how do you try to keep this team together when you're going through some times like this? You know, yesterday we had one of our best practices. You know, guys like Devon Clark have been tremendous leaders for us. On defense, Ali Gay stepping up. You know, we got Sony Fanu is back. Uh, on offense, uh, Kayshawn Butte has been a, a great leader for us. Uh, you know, we still got a, a bunch of guys that are fired up, ready to play some ball. A lot of guys that came back to play some good ball, some guys that are hungry. So I feel good about the, the locker room. Well, and you mentioned Jamone Clark, Coach. He's definitely been one of the positives this year. I mean, the improvement's yes. obvious. And really, I mean, it's the defense as a whole, right? And and so, again, it's one of those things where, like, it, 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 it doesn't feel great right now, but the defense has been markedly better this year. How do you keep your guys – kind of focusing on the improvement there and some of the positives you are seeing despite some of the uh, kind of negative noise surrounding. Yeah, you know, I'll give you an example. The ball Clark, I praised him yesterday. He goes, yeah, because there's some, still some things I need to get better at. But one of the things with the ball Clark, you know, I wanted to move him to outside linebacker. He said, Coach, I want to play stack linebacker. That was two years ago. I had a meeting with him and his parents. He said, what do I need to improve on? I said, you need to improve on the open field tackling. And you need to improve in your pass coverage, and he's done it. And you know what? When you look at that film, man, he's made some tremendous plays. He's yeah. thrown the ball down, playing with great effort. So, so guys like that are, are playing with pride. Michael Baskerville is playing good football. You know, Ali Gaines is coming back with all over the quarterback, couldn't get him down. Yeah. Guys are hungry, want to play well. So I don't see anything like that in the locker room. I mean, yeah, look, they, they tackled great the last couple of games, just except for Bo Nix. It's like everybody else they, they brought down easily. Um, one, one, one part, Coach, that really jumped out to me on the film and on the offensive side of the ball, and I know you've talked about this a lot already this week, but I am wondering, it, it, it looked like earlier in the year the check with me stuff wasn't working. Okay, let's take it out. Let's make call and stick with it. What was the idea behind it coming back into the offense this week against Auburn? Yeah, you know, I just think that we we just tried and went back to trying a little bit too much. Uh, we had a couple of ideas that uh, wanted to try and uh, just didn't work out. And we should we are better off when we go warp. We are better off when we call it and run it. And we went back to trying to some things and maybe doing a little bit too much. And obviously, it got to us. And hey, coaching probably the two minute drill is the one I think a lot of people are talking about. And that two minute okay. drill. Like, is that something like you'd like to have maybe, you know, eight to ten plays, like kind of ready to go as soon as you complete it, get on the ball, maybe go two by two so your quarterback can get the play out and move forward? And then, you know, that's something we practice all the time. You know, we practice two, uh, we practice two minute drill on Monday, we practice two minute drill on Thursday, and we practice two minute drill on Friday. Uh, but obviously, we weren't very, uh, we weren't very well organized on the first play. We had to call a timeout and talk about that. I take the responsibility for that. And it's something we can work on this week. Uh, Coach, w- what about um, – it, it was kind of interesting, right? The offense, no three and outs the entire game. Then in the fourth quarter, things started to go awry, and it coincides with uh, Derek Mason them starting to rush three and drop eight, sometimes a couple plays even rushing two and kind of yeah. dropping eight with a spy. Uh, what's the best way to combat those defenses when they start treating you like that? Run a ball. You know that. Yeah. There, was, there was one defensive lineman in a three-point stance. Everybody else in a two-point stance. Run the ball and make him get out of it. You know, that's Mississippi State did it, did it to us, or make them make, play four techniques, and then you're know, able to stop their pass rush. But you can't have both of them. You can't stop the pass and stop the run of the three-man rush and eight-man drop. So, and then they drop nine. But, you know, there's, there's got to be some ways to combat it. There's got to be some ways. There are some ways. We talked about it. 
to where the quarterback knows where to go to the ball when they drop an eight there are some holes. Uh, and uh, we just got to find those holes and be, and be uh, better well prepared. And, and, and Coach, if, if you're going to run the ball, one guy who feels very dynamic with the ball in his hands is Corey Kiner, right? I mean, he seems like he's done a very good job of the first person is rarely get him down. He had the big fourth and one conversion last week. Um, what does Kiner need to do to see more consistent touches? Just keep on doing what he's doing. And uh, we are going to get, we talked about it, we are going to give him and Armani more consistent touches. And uh, those guys are moving up on the depth charts fast. Talking to Coach O here on Off the Bench. Um, on the opposite side of the ball, like we said, defensive improvement, I, th- I think it's been really good throughout the year. Durante Jones doing a great job with that crew. The secondary communication night and day from last season. And really, so much improvement feels like it is circled around Cordell Flott and Jay Ward, Coach. What, what can you say about what those two guys have done? Yeah, the playmakers, the leaders. I'm a, I'm a uh, field goal block. That's crazy. He's got the one before. The guy has a tremendous get off. As a Mac uh, for playing, I don't think he's a free safety that can play corner. He's a corner that can play free safety. You don't find that both of them. You know, one cut out of tackle or cover. He can do both. And Cordell Flock just a playmaker. And, you know, that nickel position is such a important position in football today. He covers the slot. Some of the best players in college football playing that slot today. Hey, Coach, with so many great receivers, and we've talked about them so many times, young guys, veteran guys on this team, and it being a real strength, but can you see it start to really mold into maybe a three- or four-man rotation to see you know, if you can have three guys that are consistently in there and maybe some of the rotation goes away? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've got some guys that are right? we some guys that are moving up on the depth chart, but as you know, throughout the year, you need all of them to keep them fresh. So we're going to continue to rotate those guys. Talking to LSU head football coach Ed Ogeron here on Off the Bench. Uh, coach, when when you look at this weekend's matchup, you, you're facing a Kentucky team that is not like Kentucky teams of the past, and uh, they have a good D-line. They have a very good nose guard, and Liam Shanahan has struggled at times with, with zero nose, right, when he has to single block that nose. Uh, what what How do you combat that if you have a center that just can't win that one-on-one? Hey, the guy's huge. They've got a good line. They play a 3-4 throw. No sacks. So we have to count for them with a double team somehow, some way. And uh, we do have a plan for that. Yeah, no, but, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, it's hard to, to block the block of those sacks with that good. Same with blocking all the time. So we're going to have to have some help. No question. Coach, what about what about left tackles? So uh, Cam Wire and Anthony Bradford is both uh, rotating yeah. last game. When y'all graded out the film, um, who who kind of has the edge going into this week? Yeah, oh, you know Anthony Bradford's not doing bad. You know Anthony's yeah. a good athlete. Yeah, so that he's doing better, and uh, we think that he's doing he's doing good enough to keep him there. And uh, Cam Wire's coming along; uh, he's not totally healthy yet, so we feel like we're a little bit stronger at that left tackle position with both of them being able to play. Hey, Coach, as we move forward and, and look forward to this weekend's game, what are some of the things that you see Kentucky does well on tape on both sides of the ball? I, I really like the way they run. You know, they have the leading rusher. Yeah. Uh, he plays tight. He's tight to his blocks. He runs square. They have a good offensive scheme. They're well-rounded. Uh, I think that uh, they have the leading, they have the leading wide receiver there and the leading rusher. Their line does a good job of zone blocking. They protect the quarterback. The thing that's that surprises me about this team is they're five and zero, oh, and they're minus nine in the turnover. That wow. is very unusual. They play darn good defense. They're very stingy. They play their three four. They play good football, good sound football. As you guys know, minus nine usually leads to a, a worse record than that. That that means that, that tells you how good a football they play on both sides of the football. Yeah, yeah, definitely to overcome that. Uh, Coach, have you ever? Have you have you ever played in Lexington before? Yeah, one time. Okay, was one it? Time. So is this going to no. be the first time that where it's going to be like packed to the gills and everybody's going to be believing? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be nice. We're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to. It. I think it's the first time a lot of us, a lot of our players have been there, and the LSU hasn't been there in a while. So, and we're looking forward to it. the challenge going on the road playing the SEC team. It's undefeated. Uh, we're hungry. And let's see what happens. What's the uh, what's the plan for competition Tuesday today? Yeah, we're going to get out to play, man. Our guys had a good practice yesterday. 
uh, you know, with 24 hour rule, we put it in the garbage can. We went forward. There was a lot of great spirit out there. I think there's going to be an excellent parent, uh, practice today. Uh, we're going to count on the leadership of our football team and our coaches. Our coaches are, are ready to go. We understand what well, we've got to coach this team better. That's number one. We plan on doing it today. There you go, Coach O. LSU football. Thanks so much, Coach. Have a great practice today and best of luck this weekend. <laughs> Yes, sir. There he is, Coach Ed Ezra on Headman for LSU Football. We will close out hour number one next. Remember, we got OTB Mailbag coming up 8.15, hour number two. If you want to go ahead and send your questions, then keep it locked right here on Off the Bench.